This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 99, with Jim Rogers. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a special show for you today with a very powerful message and a message that is so important in the times that we live in, the information age. I'm extremely honored to have had the opportunity to interview legendary investor Jim Rogers. He has an unbelievable story and a journey, and I'm going to share some of the highlights of his story and journey. Jim Rogers is an American businessman, investor, and author, and he's currently based in Singapore. Rogers is the chairman of Rogers Holdings and B-Land Interest, Inc., and he was also the co-founder of the Quantum Fund and creator of the Rogers International Commodity Index, the RICI. In 1973, Rogers partnered with George Soros and founded the Quantum Fund. During 1970 to 1980, the portfolio gained 4,200%, while the S&P advanced about 47%. The Quantum Fund was one of the first truly international funds. In 1980, Rogers decided to retire and spent some time traveling on a motorcycle around the world. Since then, he has been a guest professor of finance at the Columbia Business School. In 1989 and 1990, Rogers was the moderator of WCBS's The Dreyfus Roundtable at FNN's The Profit Motive with Jim Rogers. From 1990 to 1992, he traveled through China again, as well as around the world on a motorcycle with over 100,000 miles across six continents which was picked up in the Guinness Book World of Records. He tells of his adventures and worldwide investments in Investment Biker, a best-selling book. In 1998, Rogers founded the Rogers International Commodity Index. In 2007, the index and its three sub-indices were linked to exchange-traded notes under the name Elements. The notes track the total return of the indices as an accessible way to invest in the index. Rogers is an outspoken advocate of agriculture investments. Between January 1st, 1999 and January 5th, 2002, Rogers did another Guinness World Record journey through 116 countries, covering about 245,000 kilometers with his wife, Paige Parker, in a custom-made Mercedes. The trip began in Iceland, which was about to celebrate the 1,000th anniversary of Leif Erikson's first trip to America. On January 5, 2002, they were back in New York City and their home on Riverside Drive. His route around the world can be viewed on his website, jimrogers.com. He wrote Adventure Capitalist following this around the world adventure, and it's currently one of his best-selling books. On his return in 2002, Rogers became a regular guest on Fox News' Cavuto on business and other financial TV shows. In 2005, Rogers wrote Hot Commodities, How Anyone Can Invest Profitably in the World's Best Market. In this book, Rogers quotes a financial analyst journal academic paper co-authored by the Yale School of Management professor, Professor Rowenhorst, entitled Facts and Fantasies About Commodity Futures. Rogers contends this paper shows that commodities investment is one of the best investments over time, which is a concept somewhat at odds with conventional investment thinking. In December 2007, Rogers sold his mansion in New York City and moved to Singapore. Rogers claimed that he moved because now is a groundbreaking time for investment potential in Asian markets. 
Roger's daughters speak fluent Mandarin to prepare them for the future. He was also quoted as saying, if you were smart in 1807, you moved to London. If you were smart in 1907, you moved to New York City. And if you were smart in 2007, you would move to Asia. In a CNBC interview with Maria Barty Romo, Broadcasted in 2008, Rogers said that people in China are extremely motivated and driven, and he wants to be in that type of environment, so his daughters are motivated and driven. He also stated that this is how America and Europe used to be. He chose not to move to the Chinese cities like Hong Kong or Shanghai due to the high levels of pollution causing potential health problems for his family, so he chose Singapore. He is not fully bullish on all Asian nations, But he does remain skeptical of India's future. India, as we know it, will not survive another 30 to 40 years, Rogers have been quoted. In February 2011, Rogers announced that he is starting a new index fund which focuses on the top companies in agriculture, mining, metals, energy sectors, as well as those in the alternative energy space, including solar, wind, and hydro. The index is called the Rogers Global Resources Equity Index, and according to Rogers, only the best and most liquid companies go into the index. In September 2012, Rogers was appointed by VTB Capital as an advisor to the agricultural division of its global private equity unit. Rogers noted, Russia and the CIS region have all the ingredients needed to become the world's agricultural powerhouse. It seems that everything may now be coming together under VTB Capital to make this happen, so I'm keen to participate if the fund gets off the ground. In February 2013, Rogers joined the Board of Advisors of the Coalition of Reduced Spending, and in 2015, he left the Indian market, saying it is impossible to invest on hope. I personally have read most of Jim Rogers' books from investment biker, adventure capitalist, hot commodities, uh, a bull in China, and more. But the one that really touched me deeply and had a profound impact in my life was his book, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lesson for Life and Investing. And I think this has had an even bigger impact on me now that my wife and I are starting our family. In the flow of interviews and the show, my listeners know that I usually ask the question to all of my guests. A core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? And after reading the book of Jim Rogers, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lesson for Life and Investing, it really inspired me to try and learn from other successful guests what gift they would pass down in the form of principles and values to future generations and their children. I'm going to read from the back cover of the book. Um, what Jim Rogers wrote. He said, when I was a boy, my father often pulled me aside to convey lessons intended to build what we generally refer to as character. Often his advice was very simple. Work hard, think for yourself, do right by others. But I believe those lessons provided the foundation for everything that has followed in my life. Now that I'm a dad myself, I wanted to put them down in one place with examples of my own experiences as a guide to life, adventure, and investing, both for my young daughters and for anyone else seeking success in his or her chosen field. Now, I want to share some of the lessons shared in the book because it is so powerful. Swim your own races. Don't let others do your thinking for you. Rely on your own intelligence. If someone laughs at your idea, view it as a potential sign of success. Be who you are. Be original. Be bold. And above all, be ethical. Save. Focus on what you like. Age is irrelevant when you're passionate about a goal. And dedicate yourself to what you feel passionate about in your life. And then also good habits for life and investing. Rogers recommends to be a self-starter. Attention to details is what separates success from failure, and live your life with a dream. 
always live your life with a dream. Common sense is also not so common. Most perceived wisdom is misconception, and the media propagates conventional wisdom. With regarding to education, Jim Rogers writes, To let the world be a part of your perspective, don't rely on books. Actually go and see the world and be open to people that are different from you, either at home or abroad. Always keep an open mind and be a citizen of the world. Live away from wars. If any question why we died, tell them because our fathers lied was one of his quotes. So he advises to stay away from wars. Learn philosophy. Learn to think. Philosophy teaches us how to think for ourselves. Learn history. And remember that history is a macroscopic view of the world. And also be cognizant and ponder which history books tell the truth. Remember that history is very multifaceted and written by the victors. Learn history from many views and perspectives. And history will show you that forces drive markets and that nothing out there is really new. Learn languages and make sure Mandarin is one of them. It will be the next global language. And it is the century of China. Pay attention to major changes taking place in the world right now. From a personal development and self-discovery point of view, Rogers advises to know yourself by understanding your weaknesses and acknowledging your mistakes. Know who you are. People are easily carried away by mob psychology, so know who you are. Do not panic and learn the psychology. Recognize change and embrace it. Everything changes. Everything. No one has defied the principle of supply and demand and survived. And change cannot be a catalyst. Rogers goes on to also share to pay attention to what everybody else neglects. The more certain something is, the less likely it is to be profitable. Do not think in terms of what you wish and know when not to do anything. Very, very powerful advice. He also goes on and shares that the arrogant is blind to the truth. Do not stop when you're working towards your dream. So don't give up. This book is truly a personal treasure and something I highly recommend you buy for yourself and for your children. Just pack with extremely valuable advice uh, that Jim Rogers have, has learned through his life and his journey. Jim Rogers was very generous with his time. We actually connected while he was traveling in Tokyo in between many of his meetings. So I hope you enjoy the interview. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can let me know your thoughts on Twitter by tweeting me at MC Lobsher or by email at info at cashflowninja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at cashflowninja.com or texting Cashflow Ninja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. As some of my listeners may know, I live in Newtown, Pennsylvania, a town that's about 45 minutes away from Philadelphia, the birthplace of the United States, the home of the cheesesteak, the Rocky Steps, and also the hometown of the beloved founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin believed that an investment in knowledge pays the best interest, and early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. The Cashflow Ninja have aligned itself with partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner, Onnit, provides supplements, nutrient-dense, and earth-grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well-being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GETONIT at CashflowNinjaHealth.com. Our wealthy partner, Fundrise, gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audiobook at CashflowNinjaBook.com. 
Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and I want to personally invite you to a webinar that my friend Manesh Bendy from Gold and Silver for Life is hosting. Three steps to cash flow gold and silver and create a passive income of 12% to 26.4% per year. With historically low gold and silver prices, there's never been a better time to invest your money in gold and silver and with Manesh's unique strategy, you'll get a monthly cash flow while locking in huge profits and protecting your wealth. In this webinar, you will discover how to cash flow gold and silver at 12% to 26.4% per year. The two most profitable methods used by hedge funds to acquire gold and silver. How to collapse proof your wealth and profit from the coming currency collapse and how to retire without running out of money by positioning your wealth to grow 1.358% to 4.182% over the next 10 years with gold and silver. The financial education and strategies that Manesh shares in this free webinar is life changing. You can register for this webinar now at cashflowyourgold.com. That's cashflowyourgold.com Mr. Rogers, thank you so much for joining me. What a last 12 months we've had. 2016 was a year that will be remembered for many things and especially for the results in elections and referendums. Usually these elections are merely a continuation of the status quo and a confirmation of the direction countries are headed in, but not the ones in 2016. We've had Brexit in the UK, the Italian referendum, and the US election of Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States. What's your view on the US elections and how do you see markets and the economy under President Trump for the next four years? Well, my view is that Donald Trump won and he's, he's a new president. Uh, he says he's going to cut taxes, which is great for any economy. He says he's going to build infrastructure, which is great for any economy, especially like the U.S., where the infrastructure has deteriorated dramatically over the last 70 decades. Uh, the, the problem is, of course, where's the money coming from for all of this? But if he does these things, uh, that could be good for at least for the economy and for most citizens. As I said, where's the money coming from is one problem. Another uh, situation is he has promised repeatedly that he's going to put uh, 45% trade uh, tariffs on Japan and Mexico and other people, if he does, and he says he's going to do it the first place, the first day, he said that many, many times. If he does that, trade wars have always been disastrous for everybody, not just the people involved. If he does that, then we may have uh, huge problems, including bankruptcies and eventually war. There's a global trend accelerating of populations all over the world that is fed up with the status quo and the ruling class. Nationalism is rising and populist movements are growing in popularity all over the world, from the Pirate Party in Iceland, the Five Star Movement in Italy, the Donald Trump Movement in the United States, the rising popularity of presidential candidate Marine Le Pen in France, and also the rising popularity of presidential candidate in the Netherlands, Gert Wilders. What is your view on these movements? Well, the world has got serious problems, and uh, voters are not the only people who know it. You know, They may not have the right answers, or they may not know what to do, but when people have problems and people are unhappy, they vote for something new. Uh, it's throughout history we've had a man or a woman on a white horse come riding in and say, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of these problems. I have some answers. They're usually simple answers or easy answers, but people always like the man on the white horse, especially with the uh, simple answers. And if history tells us one thing, it's to be careful of that man on the white horse. Now, after the initial Brexit shock from the UK referendum, markets corrected sharply but then recovered, and there's been a sustained rally uh, after the US presidential election and Trump victory. There are, however, problems that have not been solved in the global economy. What is your outlook for the world economy and markets in 2017? Well, we've got uh, problems, that, and they're getting worse. Uh, Japan is in recession already, as they say. Parts of Europe, parts of America are certainly in recession. But the world's got uh, serious problems facing it. Uh, interest rates are going back up. Interest rates uh, 
will hurt a lot of people. Uh, they'll help some, but they'll hurt hurt more people. You have inflation rising again. So I, I'm not very optimistic about the next two or three years. I really enjoyed your book, Hot Commodities, How Anyone Can Profitably Invest in the World's Best Market. What is your view on commodities like gold and silver and other commodities in 2017, considering this possible inflation that you mentioned? Well, I'm a very bad market timer. I'm a horrible uh, short-term trader, so I have no idea about any any particular year. I, I own gold. I I am not buying gold. I bought gold uh, for several years. Um, I have hedged some of my gold that I own. If gold goes down, you know, to under 1,000 U.S., I hope I'm smart enough to buy a lot more, a lot more gold. Other commodities, uh, oil, uh, energy, certainly making a complicated bottom in 2015, 16, 17. Uh, but once that bottom is in place, you'll see higher energy prices. Likewise, with most commodities, uh, agriculture is certainly depressed, and I guess I'd be most optimistic about agriculture of all commodities. In fact, many of most asset classes. That is very interesting, and agriculture is something that not most people are paying attention to. Now, with regards to the other favorite asset class of most investors, real estate. Real estate has certainly been frothing and is at historically high prices in most major cities. What is your current view on real estate and a possible real estate bubble in major cities globally? Well, bubbles are pretty much the same throughout history, no matter where they are. Yes, you can see bubbles in some of property markets uh, in, in the world. And history shows you sell them. You don't buy them when there are bubbles going on. What is your economic and market outlook for Asia, and more specifically China and Japan, in 2017? Well, if the world is continuing to slow down and having recessions, which I said before, then everybody will be affected. China's one of the largest uh, trading countries in the world. If their customers are having problems, they're going to have problems. Anybody in China who deals with the outside world is going to have problems, and China now has a lot of debt. The China didn't have debt for decades for many reasons. They do now. So if you have debt, and you're going to see companies in China which deal with the outside world which have debt. You're going to see them go bankrupt. That's going to cause big surprises and shocks, not just in China, but everywhere. Likewise, Japan. I mean, Japan is already in recession, according to the government. So the world's facing some uh, some serious problems. And if everybody slows down, it's very hard to escape that. Some might. I mean, Russia might. Russia's already beaten down. Oil prices are rallying. So some might be less badly hurt than others. But, you know, when the... U.S. and Europe and Japan have problems, and China has problems. Everybody has problems. Mr. Rogers, I've read and studied your books and followed your work and your career with interest, and you've shared some amazing advice and lessons with audiences all over the world. What is one particular lesson that you think is incredibly important that you have learned and wanted to share with my listeners? Be skeptical. Be in the think for yourself. It's very difficult to think for yourself and go against the crowd, but normally you can think for yourself and figure out, oh, wait a minute, All the, what everybody says is not correct. You're probably going to be successful in the market or any, anything you try to do. You're a writer or a singer, actor, sportsman, whatever. You've had some amazing adventures and travels, two of them recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. One by motorcycle covering over 100,000 miles across six continents, and another trip in a custom Mercedes through 116 countries covering about 245,000 kilometers. I found the lessons that you have learned by gathering boots on the ground information are extremely valuable. And one valuable lesson is that the black market is indispensable to one's insight into a country. If there's a black market and the currency is trading at a big premium to the official rate, you know that there's a problem, but you don't know what the problem is and you still need to figure out what the problem is. And I also enjoyed the other lesson that you shared that by speaking with someone that is involved with the black market and a black marketer, you really will develop the better understanding of the country itself. And then by also looking at the state of the roads, 
Are there traffic lights? Are there proper shops? Are there real hotels? What other indicators do you look for to identify opportunities when you're gathering boots on the ground information? Well, I mentioned one, and that is if everybody's thinking the same way, that probably means somebody's not thinking. So you should at least stop and say, now, wait a minute, could all these people be right? Because very rarely in history have everybody been right at the same time. So if you can figure out a way to be independent and think it through and think around the corners, you're probably going to be successful. If you look at life or history, you will see that no matter what people think at any time, 10 or 15 years later, it is totally wrong. That everything has changed. You pick any year in history, 1900, 2000, any year you want to pick. 15 years later, the world is totally different. So if you can realize that and see when everybody's absolutely certain that something's going to happen, think it through and you'll probably find fabulous opportunities. Your book, A Gift to My Children, A Father's Lesson, for Life and Investing is one of my favorite books. And since the show is not just about money, but by passing down a set of values and principles to future generations, if you cannot pass down money to future generations, but are allowed to pass on three values and principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Well, I'm trying to teach my daughters. I have two daughters, MC, and I'm trying to teach them to think independently to be very curious about everything, uh, no matter how uh, strange or obscure it may be. I'm trying to teach them to be aware of always. You know, there are a few lessons that young people need. Mr. Rogers, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge and outlook for 2017. I've learned so much from you over the years through your books, and I really appreciated the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you, MC. Let's do it again sometime. Hi, this is MC Lobsher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Valhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining their capital and investments with the financial vehicle of the wealthy, according to the infinite banking concept. If you are interested in learning more, you can email me at info at cashflowninja.com and I will send you a copy of Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Thank you for joining my guest, Jim Rogers, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja podcast today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes, and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I've been really humbled by your support and feedback, and if there's any way that I can provide more value to you and serve you better, please reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the offers from our partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner, Onnit, provides supplements, nutrient-dense, and earth-grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well-being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GETONIT at CashflowNinjaHealth. Dot com. Our wealthy partner, Fundrise, gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest-quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. Our wise partner, Audible, offers a free audiobook download. When you try Audible for 30 days, you can download your free audiobook at CashflowNinjaBook.com. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cashflow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. 
This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.